This video is sponsored by Masterworks, but more on that later on. If you believe that your savings account is your only option for parking cash, or if your savings account isn't earning at least 4%, then this video is for you. First off, let's talk about why parking your cash is important. But keep in mind, it's not going to help you build wealth in the long run. Inflation is eating away at the value of your money over time. So it's important that you have a specific objective in mind when you're parking your cash. Whether you're saving up for a down payment on a home, planning a renovation project, or putting money aside for an elective surgery, there are a variety of reasons to set aside cash. So if you're ready to start earning more on your parked cash, let's review some of the best options that are available today that can earn you nearly 5% or more from high yield savings accounts all the way up to medium term investment strategies. I'll start off easy with high yield savings accounts where the average savings account in the US is at 0.37%. But there are banks such as Ally and CIT Bank that are offering rates well above 4%. And there are some that are also above 5%. And if you do want a higher rate on your savings account, then an online bank or a credit union is going to be your best option. To give you context, if you had $10,000 sitting with Wells Fargo earning only 0.15%, in a year you would earn a total of $15. That same $10,000 sitting at CIT Bank earning 4.75% would yield $475. That's a pretty big chunk of change that a lot of people are simply giving up by not shopping around for a new bank. The benefit with a high yield savings account is that they are FDIC insured up to $250,000. That and they're extremely liquid where a person has immediate access to their cash at any given moment. But the downside to a savings account is that the rates are not guaranteed for any set time period. A bank can decrease their rates at their own discretion at any moment. This is an ideal spot for your emergency fund where it may not be earning at the highest rate, but you're gonna have immediate access to your money. And as a reminder, a person should have an emergency fund of at least three to six months worth of expenses saved up. And I know that's not always easy to do, but if you don't have a solid emergency fund set aside, then any small emergency could turn into a major financial crisis. Overall, high yield savings accounts are best for short-term holding with the highest access to cash or liquidity and extremely safe when it's insured up to $250,000. Here's a list of the top five bank accounts offering the highest rates today. I also have a spreadsheet linked in the description below that compares the rates and requirements on roughly 20 different banks that I update every other week. And as I mentioned earlier, inflation is eating away at the dollar and parking your cash isn't going to move the needle when it comes to financial freedom. But even in times of turmoil, there is value in investing in your 401ks and your taxed investment accounts consistently because the dollar cost averaging for long-term investing is what will truly achieve building wealth. Dollar cost averaging is one strategy, but since COVID unleashed macroeconomic chaos in the world, asset managers have shifted their investment strategies overall. Like Goldman Sachs, who believes that the ideal allocation for stocks may have fallen from around 60% to 45%. So what does Goldman suggest you do with the difference? Look into alternatives and real assets, which can potentially help salvage your lost returns. Real assets like fine art. Goldman says art can not only protect your purchasing power, but it's not just them. Just look at this new research from UBS showing the art market's resilience since the pandemic. That's right. Through record high inflation, wars, energy crisis, interest rate hikes, you name it, the art market had its biggest year ever. According to the high net worth collector surveyed by UBS, 55% plan to keep investing in art in 2023. And with today's sponsor, Masterworks, you can do the same. Masterworks is the first platform allowing you to invest in authentic, museum-grade contemporary art for a fraction of the cost. This isn't NFTs or crypto or AI or anything like that. This is real work from legendary artists like Picasso, Banksy, and Monet qualified by the SEC and broken into shares, allowing you to invest at a level that best fits your portfolio. Each of their 11 exits so far have delivered positive net returns to their investors. In 2022 alone, they've paid out over 25 million in total. Offerings have sold out within minutes, but my subscribers can skip the wait list and get priority access by clicking the link in the description. The next item that I'll discuss are I-bonds that are currently at 6.89% for the next six months. And if you aren't familiar, I-bonds are inflation protected savings bonds guaranteed and backed by the US government. So they're relatively safe. They happen to be very unique in the sense that the rate on the I-bond adjusts every six months. When inflation is high, then the I-bonds are also very high. And an added bonus to I-bonds is that they're not taxed at the state level. But there are several downsides to be aware of. The first being that you absolutely cannot cash them in your first year of owning them. And if you cash it in before the five-year mark, 
then you're gonna be forfeiting three months worth of interest. And another downside is that you can only purchase $10,000 worth per entity per year. I say entity because you can buy them based on your social security number and also under your LLCs and your trusts. You can also buy an extra $5,000 worth using your tax return, but for most people with low tax returns, they're gonna focus mostly on the $10,000 limit per year with I-bonds. And in order to purchase I-bonds, you need to go through a website that's run by the US government called Treasury Direct and it isn't exactly user-friendly. I have separate videos that walk through the entire process of buying I-bonds, along with some of the bonuses and the hacks that I use to get the most out of these bonds, like not having to pay federal tax. Overall, these items are best for holding up your cash for medium to long-term with no access to the cash in that first year. They're also extremely safe with the full backing and support of the US government. Before moving on, I have a favor to ask. If you like my content, please consider pressing the like button so my channel can grow. And I'd also love it if you'd consider subscribing so you can be up to date with all of my latest content. Another great short-term spot for cash is Certificate of Deposits or CDs. These are savings products that earn a fixed interest rate for a specified period of time. They are only offered by banks and credit unions, but you can also purchase them from brokerage accounts like Fidelity or Schwab. In either case, the CD is offered by a bank and it's FDIC insured up to $250,000 per account. The rates on CDs from banks today are just over 5% and they are typically offered in increments of 3, 6, 9, and 12 months and they're also in yearly increments. With a CD, you are agreeing to lock up your money for a fixed amount of time, but you're given a guaranteed rate in return along with the added security of being insured. The major drawback to CDs from a bank is that if you wanna withdraw them before their maturity date, then you're typically gonna to have to pay a fee for that early withdrawal. Fees are often in the form of having to give up one or two months worth of interest. Granted, there are some no penalty CDs that are available like the one from CIT Bank at 4.8% for 11 months, where if you choose to withdraw the funds before the maturity date, there is no fee involved. But this particular CD does have a minimum investment of $1,000. The no penalty CDs have a lower rate, but they come with that added benefit of no early withdrawal fee. In this case, it's higher than most savings account rates that are available today, and you have the guaranteed rate for a fixed period of time. A no penalty CD is somewhat better than most bank accounts because it has the same level of liquidity, but this one does have a high minimum at $1,000. Now, I also mentioned that you can buy CDs from a brokerage account like Fidelity and Schwab, and they have a tendency to have higher rates than going through a bank, even though they're being sold directly from banks. I know it doesn't seem like that should be the case, but it is. As of today, the best three year CD that I could find from a bank was at 4.5% from Bread Savings. But on Fidelity, I found one that is call protected for three years from Morgan Stanley at 4.8%. The difference with buying a CD from a brokerage is that they do not come with an early withdrawal fee. Instead, a person can sell their CD on the secondary market, which is sort of like an eBay for used CDs. If you need to offload a CD early on the secondary market, then you may need to discount the CD to move it. But if interest rates have dropped since you bought your CD from a brokerage account, then you can actually sell it at a premium or slightly marked up and make more money on the CD on the secondary market. I'm not going to get too deep into CDs today, but there are so many options and ways to make money on CDs, but I have several different videos on the topic if you'd like to learn more. Overall, with CDs, you have less liquidity than a high yield savings account, and they are good for short to medium timeframes and the rates are also a bit higher on CDs. Here's a listing of some of the highest rate CDs offered today, and I also have a link to updated CD rates in the description below. I'll cover two more spots on where to park your cash, and then I'll review some real life examples on how you may want to leverage each one of these. The next area to review is treasuries, or T-bills to be more specific. T-bills are a form of treasury that mature at somewhere between one month and one year. Treasuries are sold from the same site as I-bonds, which is Treasury Direct. T-bills are different from CDs in the sense that they are not insured, but they are backed by the US government, which I think is a relatively safe investment. Another big difference with T-bills is that they don't accrue interest like a CD. Instead, they're sold at a discount and the final payment of principal and interest will be at a fixed rate. For example, if a one-year T-bill is sold with a 5% rate and the minimum purchase for a T-bill is $100, you would be awarded your T-bill and charged roughly $95. And when it matures, you are given the full $100 in return. It's just something you're gonna to wanna to be mindful of when looking into T-bills. As for advantages with T-bills, they do not require you to pay any state or local tax on the earned interest. Another item of difference is how they are sold. 
A T-bill or treasury is sold at certain time frames which are called auctions. Don't let the term scare you off. You can buy a treasury as a simple transaction and you are not bidding on the traditional auction if you don't want to. These purchases are considered non-competitive purchases of treasuries. The recent rates at the four week was at 4.6% and the one year was at 4.64%. Treasuries are similar to CDs in that you are giving up your money for a fixed amount of time. And if you want to withdraw your funds early on a treasury, then you need to work with an intermediary like a bank or a broker to sell them secondhand. And if you do that, then you're gonna be paying a commission on the sale, which results in you losing some of your investment. And similar to CDs, you can buy them both new and used on the secondary market from a brokerage account like Fidelity or Schwab. T-bills have a similar use case as CDs where they have less liquidity than a savings account, but the rates are often better and are locked in for a set time period. Now, an area that I'll briefly touch on is money market funds, which are a type of mutual fund that invests in high quality, short-term debt, and cash equivalents similar to the things that I've already talked about. In layman's terms, these funds are invested in things like U.S. Treasuries, Certificate of Deposit from banks, and Banker's Acceptance, or short-term debt from commercial banks. They are not meant for long-term investing, but for parking your cash with low but safe returns because of what they're invested in. And your only option for buying a money market fund is from a brokerage company. In looking at a common money market fund, from Fidelity, the seven-day yield is at 4.83% and the one-year return is at 2.85%. And as you can see from the areas of investment, it's made up mostly of U.S. Treasuries and CDs. The rates on the money market fund are fairly low and like most mutual funds, it does have an expense ratio of 0.18%. But the upside is a person has high liquidity and they can sell the fund at any moment. And the investments, as I had shown, are very low risk. The use case for a money market fund is fairly specific. The person utilizing this to park cash is someone that's probably sold a fair amount of stock and wants to park cash long enough to see the market to begin to turn around. Where that person could keep all their money within the brokerage ecosystem that they're already working with, and then they can reinvest when the moment is right for them. That person could sell a money market fund and reinvest it all in the same day, and that's one of the key benefits. However, a person can't easily do that with other areas for parking your cash because the transfer process into a brokerage account from a bank could take several days. This is why so many investors utilize money market funds to park their cash while they're waiting out uncertainty in the market. Now I'll move on to some scenarios where we can map out options for parking cash. And please keep in mind that there are multiple different ways for parking cash, and I'm only sharing these examples for illustration. With that in mind, I would love to hear in the comments below how you're choosing to park your cash, along with what your specific situation is. Let's say we have Bob, and he's nearly 60 and extremely healthy, but he likes to whitewater raft and mountain bike, and he owns his own business. His hobbies obviously keep him healthy, but if anything happens to him, he is on his own to take on the burden of the expenses. He wants to set aside six months worth of expenses for his emergency fund at roughly $24,000. He could take the easy route and keep it all within his savings account because it has the highest level of liquidity. Or he could put half of it in his savings account and break up the remaining half and put them into either three or six month CDs or T-bills. Or taking it a step further, he could lock in that 11 month no penalty CD that I mentioned earlier which is paying 4.8%, and then he wouldn't need to keep reinvesting into those short-term CDs and T-bills. There is no one perfect answer, but my point is to show that there are a few different options and it all depends on your personal needs and how much effort you wanna put into it. Next, we have Nathan and Rebecca, just a couple of dinks where they wanna renovate their 100 year old home in Seattle, but finding a contractor is taking them a very long time and they expect the process to take roughly two years before they even begin construction. They've saved up $200,000 where they want their cash to be nearly 100% secure where it can't drop in value and they don't need a high level of liquidity in the short term. All that, and they want the highest return possible. In this case, they'll probably want to bypass the savings account altogether because it isn't a locked-in rate. Given the high dollar amount that they have saved up, they could each buy $10,000 in I-bonds where the rate is at 6.89%. In addition, they can each buy another $10,000 in I-bonds as a gift for each other 
that they can physically give the following year. This way, they are locking in the high rates of the I-bonds today, and they accrue at the rate when purchased, not given as a gift. This happens to be a little loophole in I-bonds that I cover in more detail in this video right here. And as for the remaining $160,000, they can have them in multiple intervals of CDs or treasuries. Because of living in Washington, they don't have a state income tax, so there isn't a huge benefit from the treasuries and the tax savings that it provides. In this case, they can have CDs purchased in intervals up to the two-year mark when they actually need the cash. Between having to find a reliable contractor and dealing with permits in Seattle, Let's be honest, they probably won't even kick off this project for the next five years. I hope that those examples are helpful for you and the options for parking your cash gives you insight into the investments that you can utilize in your own circumstances. That wraps up today's video on where to park your cash. Thanks so much for watching.